my thanks and gratitude to the PSG management, secretary, principal, and vice principal for giving permission and guidance to organize this webinar. My heartfelt welcome to our speakers, Dr. Vijay Ashogan of Chalmers University, Sweden, and Mr. Sheshatri, University of Tromso, Norway. And once again, I, uh, I welcome all the participants to our webinar. A small introduction about our guest speaker. Dr. Vijay Ashogan, uh, Vijay Shankar Ashogan, a researcher working on an interdisciplinary platform. He has completed his PhD in University of Bergen, Norway. He did his first postdoctoral research at Zhejiang University, China, and the second postdoctoral research at the Chalmers University of Technology, Sweden. At present, he is continuing as a researcher at Chalmers University. He has strong expertise in electron microscopy. His research focus also includes mathematical calculations and simulation of electron optics, image scripting, image processing using Python and machine learning. Now I hand over the session to Dr. Vijay Ashokan. Thanks for a nice introduction. And very, uh, I thank you very much uh, for PSG Arts College for providing such opportunity. And also, I thank you, uh, participants. It's a really warm welcome for me today. I'm happy to share a few uh, informations or my research experience with you. I'm really proud to uh, present in Coimbatore uh, Institute because I I I grown up in Coimbatore, uh, in Coimbatore Institute of Technology and PhD College of Technology. Hopefully, uh, I just share my screen. Uh, okay, yeah. So let's get into our presentation. So. So I'm talking about uh, machine learning and imaging uh, because I'm from electron microscopy background. Uh, we are doing more simulation and modeling uh, with our images. Uh, there are quite few opportunities or uh, advancement in this field of research uh, by using imaging and co compare, combining this with machine learning uh, through various uh, programming skills and algorithms, I can say. So far, we were using a Fourier, first, a first Fourier transform uh, and also a uh, few uh, basic Fortran codes and MATLABs uh, for simulation. And we have uh, software packages for our imaging like QSTEM or iSTEM like that. So th those are all software packages. So we can simulate our images, but we can just simulate what we can, uh, what we can feed into the input. But the advancement in the field, like in machine le learning, uh, there are opportunities arise uh, where you can, make an image by yourself through various learning processes or various network neural network which derived through the uh, data processing which uh, fed into the machines already so these are the future opportunities we are uh, going to work and there are a uh, few collaboration i started recently with such uh, computer programming uh, mostly to the computation of my imaging uh, that's more uh, needed in, uh, in recent career so let's start with this uh, i just get into a few introduction like uh, artificial intelligence yeah of course yeah it's an intelligent behavior exhibited by machines but the definition of intelligence is controversial so a more general description of ai that would satisfy most is the behavior of system that adopts its action in response to its environment and prior experience so the machine learning as a group of approaches to an a machine with artificial intelligence. A machine learning is itself a broad category. In essence, it is process by which a system learns from a training set so that it can deliver autonomously an appropriate response to new data. So as I told, it's machine learning itself a broad category. Even within our field of microscopy, we use different processing algorithms uh, to get into the machine learning. But the only thing is the common system we get here is the machine learning process. It have training set of data which, which we fed already through various uh, processing. So it, it just autonomously get all the data we delivered already and we put as an input newly. So it get everything into uh, the process like a human brain and gets uh, the, the imaging what we need or what we are requiring. So this is the, the need of machine learning in imaging. Uh, within, uh, we, we select a few algorithms related to what we need 
to the particular programs or particular research questions. So uh, we also uh, just come across certain things like in the neural networks, there are a possibility uh, to get uh, the mini data uh, from different imaging process. So it's, it acts like a biological brain. Uh, the input signals are modified as they pass through network layers of neurons before emerging as output. Uh, so there are more possible interactions which is strengthened through this uh, network, uh, like artificial neural networks. So this uh, just I wanted to put in because just to get into the introduction uh, for those who are already uh, not into this uh, field. So the machine learning technology is being extensively used in many aspects of modern society like web searches, social networking, smartphones, bioinformatics, robotics, chatbots, and self-driving cars. Uh, machine learning techniques are used to classify or direct objects in images, speech to text conversion, pattern recognition, or natural language processing like that. So this is like a, what we are talking today or what we are dealing today is like an um, comparing the machine language or machine language algorithm for our imaging, which comes from the underlying physics, mathematics and computations. So we are going to take all this into consideration, uh, starting from the physics, getting into the mathematical problems, getting into the computations. So how this machine learning algorithms are connected. So that's what we are going to see today. And before that, I would like to show a few uh, recent examples, like in uh, Singapore healthcare systems, they have used this machine learning uh, process for uh, processing all the health related uh, data, uh, starting from uh, a new patient uh, lab report, clinical data or di diagnosis report. Uh, there are uh, clinical input through the surgeon or through the doctors, uh, or uh, then there are unsupervised inference and supervised inference, which already fed as a data uh, through various uh, inputs. So it, it choose whether it's, it's need for drug or need for surgery or such, such, such things. So everything can be uh, accommodated into the platform of machine learning, uh, which is a practical uh, recent applications, uh, which is started by a uh, few countries. And particularly this slide shows about the Singapore uh, health uh, things. So this is a machine learning uh, application in our material science. Uh, it, it can process the data of different combination of elements and it, it can make a components or compounds uh, of different choices, of different properties. Uh, it, we, we can feed the data of what we need. For example, we need such a high strength material or high electron mobility material or, or any other things. So we can choose the elements that these need to be combined to get such output. So even formation of new materials of choices is possible through the materials uh, machine learning. Uh, it, can, it can choose the composition, it can uh, set an alloy data, uh, it can also uh, make an uh, application uh, suggestion after the alloy is formed. So uh, it, it, can, it can extend it to form a, like a new material into new world. So these are the uh, recent practical applications what we what the world is trying to do uh, that's what i do uh, that's what i want to show uh, of course there are chatbots uh, you, you might have enco encountered uh, when you are having like a chat with uh, banking system or even in our uh, european countries even housing agents are doing such as chatbots and machine learning is getting uh, like a new opportunities in smart car driving uh, there are there are many practical applications which is already into the real world but these two slides are more related to uh, my application so that just wanted to show these two things uh, as an example or model before getting into the imaging machine learning uh, topic so coming back to our topic machine learning and imaging as i told you this is like it start with physics problem uh, or physics research questions or physics platform then those answers are derived by the mathematics, mathematical calculations, then the computation comes in. Uh, when computation comes in, there are uh, certain algorithms we need to follow and certain, uh, certain programming language we need to follow. And uh, these 
things combine uh, make and machine learning into the process of uh, next stage so far when, when we say computational imaging uh, that's only represent like an imaging interpretation nothing more than that the, those things are uh, dealt only with the interpretation now with the recent advancement like in machine learning architecture or deep neural network we can form an image it's it's called as a computational image formation so you can bring in a new image as like you're bringing in new materials as like you're bringing in new data so that's the difference of what we dealt previously and what we are now dealing so i wanted to uh, even take out few examples like uh, what what we do with the computational imaging and imaging interpretations uh, for example what are the things we so far used in optics uh, from the like um, deriving the mathematical calculations uh, into the imaging interpretations or beam calculations for for example in in few next few slides i used to show that so uh, th th that's things we start with that then we will move on to uh, other uh, algorithms what we uh, practically use so these things will be going to be like an uh, as an applied scientist i i just show few slides where we uh, get an output uh, of course i am not an uh, uh, computer uh, engineer or computer scientist so uh, as a material scientist i i just drive you information through this computational modeling and get my results i can interp uh, interpret so those results so i i stick on to those topic so i'm more related to the microscopy imaging and computations so that's my uh, category of uh, choice today so for example uh, this is uh, 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 this is a work which i want to show you because this is a work which partly done from coimbatore institute of technology and university of bergen norway and i'm little personally connected to this uh, of course there are uh, certain computation work is still going on uh, with uh, this extension of uh, master thesis uh, for example there is a a uh, gaussian beam which comes into the uniaxial crystal then there are possibility for ordinary ray and extraordinary ray after transmutation so these things uh, for the for the wave equation or to calculate how the beam looks after the transmutation through various type of mediums uh, various type of propagation medium then there are certain uh, calculation comes in uh, which is really uh, like a time taking process because of uh, double integrals and quadruple interactions so uh, for example here i just show a few uh, mathematical derivations uh, which forms the electrical field of total which is from the ordinary and extraordinary rays so these things can derive with different uh, integrals so these integrals uh, can be uh, calculated using uh, th this project particularly used uh, newton raphson method so of course i, I there are possibility uh, to derive these things through numerical calculation through newton raphson method but still uh, the computation brings in a uh, few advantages later on uh, to 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 make it various a uh, parameter to feed various parameter into the calculation and compute it uh, in a short time so the need to get into the computation here instead of just uh, sitting with mathematics uh, so they are entered like this for example they have took the data from the mathematical calculations or the numerical calculations uh, they take as a input data process through the fortran then executed it then used matlab and plot the data plot the graph so those beams which uh, comes here as like a ordinary ray or extraordinary ray with all this mathematical derivation these things can be like plotted as a graph later on uh, with uh, non truncated uh, or truncated beam so there, there are possibility for different uh, things like a truncated or non truncated you i think you can understand the truncation and, and non truncated as a mathematician so these results uh, have are obtained using matlab of course they have later on used uh, c++ for a, a graphical user interface so the software is designed uh, in such a way that gui will take the input data from the user process it in the background and displays the result in main window uh, so you know, the possibility here is in uh, like for each every each and every polarization or each and every beam process and each and every um, 
propagation medium you don't need to calculate uh, with all the all the derivation newly so you can just feed in the data you can feed in the parameters you can just set in the beam calculations then uh, like particularly with more physics like an aperture size uh, like that uh, all this about okay so the, so so the software is designed uh, through this computational methodology then all the derivations is possible in a quick time so that's that's a basic idea of course this can be extended to uh, python programming uh, so that that's in underway so i cannot show the results now uh, of course uh, there are a few outputs from the matlab after these calculations uh, how this non truncated extraordinary beam and truncated extraordinary uh, beam in 3d surfaces and and residual surfaces uh, this is how it looks uh then i go to uh, like this is an extension which as i told you in previous slide uh, using the python uh, generated bivariate normal distribution with mat uh, plot library uh, so those beams can be uh, ex like plotted like this uh, using python programming uh, as i told you uh, even we are extending our work uh, from the uh, fortran matlab c++ Uh, putting all the data into python later on uh, i don't want to show the recent results from our uh, work because it's it's not yet published but i just want to show the uh, some similar work which is already done uh, and 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 it's it's available in this uh, website so this is a model uh, what we are trying to extend our work i want to show this slide because i am going to talk about vortex beam with machine learning in next few slides so the the gaussian beams uh, look like this and uh, the vortex beams uh, it's it's it may be uh, varied with different phases and wavefronts uh, and this is how the vortex beams looks and these are more important to study uh, because these type of beams uh, are uh, more useful in the optical trapping uh, in biological cell imaging uh, so these need to be studied at uh, various uh, parameter differences various propagation medium so i just come across a recent paper with uh, used machine learning to uh, to process all the data uh, in particular related to the Uh, angular momentum uh, like orbital uh, angular momentum which is highly associated with vortex beam so what they did is uh, they just uh, feed a forward neural network uh, method uh, to identify this hybrid orbital angular momentum of the vortex beam uh, they also have simulated an atmospheric turbulence uh, then after the atmospheric turbulence there are some distorted uh, vortex beams uh, possible which can be simulated uh, with few uh, diffracted images then this diffraction pattern related to the uh, vortex beams with different orbital angular momentum uh, possibilities then this can be uh, feed to uh, like a forward feed forward neural network with many output data uh, it it can make its own uh, choice of uh, output uh, with different uh, like like a brain a human brain thinking so this is one uh, a recent uh, computational imaging which related to the machine learning which i come across i will go to my uh, electron microscopy things uh, which is i am more related uh, to the research world uh, i have i'm i'm using more of uh, mathematical calculations uh, or computation uh, to process my images so we are we are writing uh, like image scripting uh, process those images uh, what we obtain from the transmission electron microscopes uh, so in general all the high resolution transmission electron microscope uh, it can be uh, it can be uh, shown like in a physics way like a beam that is an electron there are objective lens there are back focal plan where you are getting uh, all the diffracted patterns then image plane in the optic axis so this can be directly interpreted through the mathematical relations like uh, this is a direct space uh, the objective lens after the specimen after the object which brings in the fourier transformation then the diffraction pattern is 
got into the reciprocal space, these can be, of course, the first Fourier transformation in a direct space, then into the reciprocal space, then those reciprocal space can be inverse Fourier transform uh, and get into the direct space of image again. So what, what, what the image, what we are obtaining is not directly an image. First, it, 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 have, a, it have a wide choice of uh, processing uh, these image uh, usually it's a phase contrast image and results from the interference of transmitted and diffraction diffracted beams so there are uh, there are beam calculation needed here to interpret how these beams are behaving like an electron beam here uh, behaving in such a such a specimen like it's a propagation or transmission medium uh, so we need to calculate it in a, a fourier transform uh, like a, a fourier mask filtering methodology uh, then fast fourier transformation is used uh, in, the, in this reciprocal space we get all the data uh, by using various filters. So this is how uh, we, we use uh, FFT in our imaging. Uh, this can be done uh, like a direct simulation, like an experimental image to uh, IFFT, like an inverse FFT without any image scripting in a recent advanced uh, microscopy tools. But however, uh, we also trying to write some scripts. Uh, for example, we take, take the experimental image and form a fast Fourier transform uh, spots from the images. Then there are a possibility for uh, mask filtering where the spatial frequencies from the external backgrounds are completely filtered out. And the band pass mask filtering, it's again, it's it's filtered more of background noises uh, through, uh, through the spatial uh, frequency uh, variations. So then the filter diffractogram and get into the inverse FFT and forms an image uh, with more uh, like, I cannot say this image is a more cl clear image, but of course we can form a little more clear image and we can calculate all this data uh, later on with this images uh, instead of, uh, okay. So this this is how the Fourier mass filtering is used in our regular TEM. So this, we, we are not making much into the Python or much into the machine learning so far, but we are using the image scripting as of now. But there are possibility uh, by using uh, these scripts, for example, uh, instead of uh, like, uh, this is a slight example how, how the fast Fourier transformation in a two, uh, two dimensional function, just using X and Y in a spatial domain uh, of x and y uh, with with various uh, spatial frequencies like u and v in x and y directions so these data are uh, set into uh, these equations and this can be uh, calculated or computed uh, with different techniques one of such is python which can be used uh, later on uh, so this is a general example of how the fourier response uh, to the uh, two dimensional uh, spatial frequency imaging so such things with the general uh, FFT, uh, either we can do a rectangular or circular region of interest. For this, uh, three regions shows a rectangular uh, region of interest. Uh, from the image, it, it calculate uh, the force Fourier transform patterns uh, through the algorithms what we write. And this is in circular patterns. Uh, so the circular, region of interest FFT is slightly more clear than the rectangular. That's what this paper uh, dealt with. Mm, this is a uh, copper indium gallium selenide. Uh, I'm, I just want to show this because I'm more closely related to this since my uh, bachelor degree in uh, CAT and master's degree in uh, PhD tech. These type of uh, solar cell structures or materials are, uh, are like a V synthesis and uh, used in our projects uh, in both colleges and still uh, professors are using such structures. So we, we, for, for example, when we derive this image from transmission electron microscope, then we keep on writing some script to get all this data and, and, and recalculate many things. So uh, this can be extended. For example, so far we were dealt with fast Fourier transformation. Of course, these algorithms can be extended to like a geometric phase analysis method. So GPA is a digital signal processing method used with fast Fourier transform algorithms in high resolution transmission electron microscopy images to quantify displacement and strain fields in crystalline lattice at nanoscale resolution. 
So GPA are based on local symmetry and periodicity and has been very successful at extracting structural information in many regular structures, including identifying defects, strain, and phase boundaries. So GPA is an, another extension of uh, image processing or signal processing using FFT algorithms. But of course, there are, there are certain drawbacks in this because when we are calculating the lattice parameter or atoms uh, through the image uh, processing, uh, this GPA can be used only for the certain uh, symmetric and periodicity. If if the symmetry if the symmetry is missed and if there is a periodicity uh, is is not in uh, regular uh, then we cannot use geometric phase analysis so that's why we are jumping from fft and uh, certain boundaries are crossed or limited uh, that can be extended using geometric phase analysis then we are uh, trying to extend these geometric phase analysis drawbacks uh, using uh, other uh, computation methodologies which i show in few slides later on so, so this uh, geometric phase approach is based on combining real space and Fourier space information, an idea first proposed for the analysis of sound in terms of wave packets. So this is now extended for the uh, calculating the uh, intensity of image and the displacement uh, that affects an uh, imaging parameter as an output. So it calculates all the, all the parameters and getting into the lattice fringes and calculate how the disturbances occurred uh, through uh, local strain or stress variations. And it, it, that's, that's how it identifies the defects or an add atoms later on. So these are the um, parameters we get into uh, the computation using uh, different frequencies, amplitude, and phases, and we use the local uh, Fourier components. So this is one uh, possibility of uh, extending FFT with a GPA. Uh, but uh, this, like for example, this is an uh, GP analysis of an edge dislocation. Uh, this is a high resolution TM image so after FFT and inverse FFT, all these uh, lattice fringes can be uh, calculated uh, from here. It, ca it can get on with different uh, uh, like phases, like this is one, one, one. It's, I'm just entering into a little material science, but of course, I just want to show the differences because these two are getting from the uh, same HRTM images, but with different faces, uh, so just to understand if you're a mathematician, it may be difficult, but still uh, I just want to show the differences uh, with different uh, faces here. It, it can even uh, like an image uh, with some burger vector, uh, then uh, the, the Fourier transform inset uh, shows how these images uh, can be uh, get into uh, like a face mapping. So it shows the different faces uh, later on uh, that can be uh, computed. So this is an, another uh, example using a GPA, uh, like a digital image processing. Uh, I have a few uh, disturbances here. So I want to know uh, how this looks. Uh, so I have used a different uh, set of data or uh, feed into the algorithms, uh, FFT. Then I get a few uh, patterns. Then uh, these things uh, can also be derived and, and form uh, images later on. So this is, then high resolution TM image, uh, which can be derived from here uh, through the GPA analysis method. So this is a recently published paper from someone in the nano letters, uh, Kaleta et al. This, this is like, this is my own uh, work, uh, which I have used uh, tungsten dope and these uh, bright spots are tungsten and this is an ASFI single atomic layer. So I have used uh, QSTEM as an image simulation so far uh, because I want to know whether this is a tungsten atom or it's it's just a molybdenum, like a two molybdenum atom sitting in the same place or, or there are, uh, it's, it's whether it is an, just an add atom or into the uh, crystal structure. So that's why uh, we want to simulate it. So what we do is th this these three simulation is nothing to do with my images. So that's why uh, we are, as I told you, there are some simulation works which is available, but we can simulate what we need, but we cannot get images 
as like a, as like it's a missing information from uh, obtained images so we cannot get that so only thing is we can simulate such structures and calculate some intensities and we'll check uh, this intensity is derived from here and these three intensity is derived from here we check whether this intensity is map matching with the original image intensity so we can easily say whether it is an uh, w alloy uh, into uh, molybdenum disulfide uh, through this processing so this simulation it's uh, it's like a straight forward available just we feed a data of what we need uh, what we get from transmission electron microscope and say yeah, say to yes please, these are the parameters please go on with this check the parameters and give me a data and the simulator gives such data and we just compare it so so we we want to extend this right so we cannot just believe what simulator is giving through our input it has to process its own that's why we are going into or jumping into uh, new fields now uh, for example like this one so this is an like it's used gpa of course it has an certain limitations uh, still it used few things like a, a two dimensional gaussian fitting uh, and also there are some center of mass calculations uh, so these things are uh, having like an like a fit the atomic columns using two dimensional elliptical gaussian functions x and y with uh, intensity and such mathematical calculations is derived and as it, it's given as an input uh, to the processing algorithms uh, for example, uh, the, the final uh, solution is provided with a Python programming language uh, with uh, the, the Atom app. Uh, with, uh, they used such source code and given some instruction how to process this data. Of course, it relies heavily on fitting and modeling routines implemented in Hyperspace. by such a, uh, algorithms or subroutines are used in such programming. But to get such final results, we need to uh, process the data or algorithms using GPA. Uh, if I if I just simply uh, explain this with uh, what we see here, uh, it's a local overaging of distributed atoms through our imaging. So it it get on into the principal component analysis. So this is a method of analysis which involves finding the linear combination of set of variables that has a maximum variance and it reduce the backgrounds, remove the effects and, and repeat the successful, uh, repeating it successfully and get on with final image after a uh, few, few repetition and check the uh, consistency. So these things are used uh, from the original image. As I told you, there are a center of mass, which is old, uh, uh, like no, I cannot say it's a dead world, but of course it's uh, it's an old uh, uh, calculation of uh, atomic positions through these images. Uh, then uh, this identifies certain uh, different atoms, like a, this is classified as a A cation, and this is a classified as B cation. So uh, center of mass calculation will differentiate different atoms like a different oxygen is here so these three atoms are uh, classified or differentiated using center of mass then the Gaussian fitting formula is getting into uh, the work here uh, calculate the atomic columns through the two-dimensional Gaussian fitting methodology and get all these functions and and it reconstruct the images so as with reference to the previous slide which I was working we just simulate our own, uh, like uh, get on the parameter and just simulate it. But here, if you see uh, this system itself is calculating certain things and identifying certain things, whether it is an A type of cations or whether it is a B type of cations or, or any anions comes in. So it also make an image reconstruction or image construction uh, and forms the final uh, solution using the Python programming. That's, that's why I want to show my results on this one, just comparing how uh, the next stage is developed using these calculations or programming. So this is how this image can be processed. And there are also uh, like, for example, there are uh, normal exposure and the smart alignment, uh, which is again uh, through the GPA uh, processing uh, method methodology and gets more uh, data or like an, um, uh, get, get on more data, whether these are uh, atomic chains in a like regular periodicity or there are some defects or if there is any strain over here, all this can be uh, calculated with the scanning profiles. Uh, th these are the like a post-processing uh, uh, methodology after we get uh, image from our TEM.
So this is one uh, image construction uh, example. So get, getting more into the Python, I just come across recently with a few uh, uh, Python ecosystem uh, add-on packages. For example, they have used uh, PyUSD. USD is like an universal uh, spectroscopic and imaging uh, data files. So they have just derived more uh, data files and they use the Python packages like a microscopy uh, for uh, nanoscale imaging and spectroscopy modalities uh, by using multi-frequency uh, scanning probe microscopy, scanning tunneling spectroscopy, uh, X-ray diffraction microscopy, and as like we are using transmission electron microscopy. Uh, so there are a set of uh, yeah, sub packages they have, they, they are trying to use like IVO, uh, which is a translated classes that translate data from various proprietary files formats, uh, then processing, then analysis, then simulation. So all this can be done. Uh, for example, this is a microscopy uh, images we acquire then pre-processing is done, the file output is transferred to uh, such, like we, as of now, I am using digital microgroph uh, and my collaborators are using MATLAB, but uh, I, of course we wish to use Python programming in later stage. Uh, we are using all of our uh, efforts until this one. Uh, we, want, we want to enter into uh, these uh, criteria later on. Uh, so, so this is like a cyclic uh, way. So this gives like a, data input to the uh, data mining and get into ne neural network and we process new images in future uh, uh, with our own uh, data which is we are calculating and feeding into now so there are the like it, it, it do the parallel computing uh, data visualization and all the uh, graphical processing you need computing uh, within a within a short period of time with our own uh, with our own code of development so this is uh, just an, another example using uh, microscopy. Uh, these are like original images uh, they obtained using uh, high resolution TM. So they, they, they take like, they just make an image window uh, like here, uh, it, it classified into different windows than a singular uh, value decomposition. That's a, like a, uh, that's a methodology um, it's applied to uh, stack uh, image of uh, subsections uh, to decompose the data into components. Uh, so this is like an uh, SVD, uh, singular value decomposition. So after those things, uh, the abundant maps were obtained from the original images. And then the clustering is another algorithm they, they can use, uh, like it's used recently. So the, through the clustering algorithms, they, they can take a pattern matching with uh, atom position from here, they, they get more uh, derived information after this processing um, through Python. Uh, so the image even can be reconstructed later on. Uh, like if you see the original image and cleaned image, uh, you can identify many things uh, after the processing or, uh, or after the reconstruction, I can see. So these things like, uh, it's, it's like a cyclic process. So image acquisition, pre-processing, standardization. So all these standardizations are like, they can be uh, programmed or, or computed uh, with our previous uh, methodologies like DP or Python or, or FFT algorithm. Then it's transferred here, it's publishing. Then again, it's it's just for my data mining. It's, so uh, we combine now our uh, physics and material science to the uh, computational data facilities. So this is another example. Uh, for example, here they have used automatic microscopic image analysis by moving window a local Fourier transform and machine language. So in this approach, uh, the whole image is scanned by a local moving window uh, with a defined size and a two dimensional Fourier transform is calculated for each of the windows. Then all the local uh, Fourier transforms are fed into a machine language processing. Uh, firstly, a number of components in the details is estimated from principal component analysis uh, which i which i explained to you in uh, the previous slide uh, so pca is used and here they were secondly they are also using uh, non negative matrix function factorization that is nmf so this uh, nmf it's like a it's a group of algorithms uh, in a multivariate analysis so when we, when, whenever you have multiple uh, variate then uh, you can use this uh, NMF, or at least in the imaging, uh, PCA and NMF are nowadays used uh, like in a sequence, like first PCA, then into NME. Uh, so this um, forms like a set of algebra uh, 
uh, used here uh, to recalculate. So, uh, so these windows are uh, are are taken here, like in a two-dimensional FFT, uh, then feed into um, machine learning uh, PCA screens uh, plot, script plot, and then into the NMF loading, which get uh, more uh, face analysis, uh, which is uh, not possible. Sometimes it may be confusing with image. So these things are uh, the, for, through the final output we get uh, more information for, for, and and shows uh, different studies or or get more details i, I can say so this can be uh, done uh, like an or in an automated way without any human so we don't just sit uh, always like in our previous simulations we just get the data and give to the machine it processes data through its previous knowledge so this is another example in our case, uh, like we have different set of uh, platinum and, and gold in a different phases, gold, gold in different phases, and there are some different regions. So we need to identify, uh, of course, we are nowadays, like in a present world, we are identify using uh, our, our own regular uh, scripting, uh, but sometimes uh, we, as a, it, it, there, are, there are possibility for human errors. So the machine, uh, learning uh, processes are used uh, to get all the data like it, it gets a background it, it calculates the, like these are the FFTs as, as you know uh, it calculates the germanium phases it calculates the platinum interfaces uh, everything everything can be identified uh, using this uh, machine learning processing so the so so these are the future works we are planning to do with our microscopy images so far we are using our world uh, scripts. So I have, I have even uh, looking for some collaborators who have some material science knowledge and also uh, the computational uh, knowledge, like a theoretical uh, modeling. So, so we need more uh, more of such uh, such collaborations for our uh, future work. So this is another example. Uh, for example, uh, in a GPA, as I told you, it it just shows only the regular or periodic asymmetric arrangements but uh, there are a new uh, like a fully convention a convolutional network uh, through like advantages of uh, deep learning based algorithms in machine learning uh, things so it, it can even calculate if there are different atoms are sitting in different heights so this can be uh, computed and shows uh, different atoms within the same image, like same face is sitting in a different uh, column height. So that can be classified now. Uh, these things are very hard in our regular day, -day uh, methodologies, but nowadays with advancement, we can easily identify the uh, column height. So with the, with the images, uh, it can simulate or compute uh, different different uh, co uh, different atoms in a different uh, height so th this this can be like a simulated uh, like this so with our it, it compares our own real image and the simulated image and and shows an output like a probable uh, space of atoms uh, sitting here and there uh, with a more uh, clear information uh, compared to our uh, real and simulated image so this is uh, this, this is where we are lacking so far, and of course we are happy now, uh, as as we are seeing the future is bright in our case of uh, like in our electron microscopy field uh, with advancement of, advancement of machine learning. Because uh, if you see here, it's just a simple uh, you can calculate a few tens of atoms, but in our uh, electron microscopy in our real world within our sample, we get lakhs of lakhs of atoms. So we cannot sit with those lakhs of atoms to check everything, uh, everything from uh, from the images, and we miss the information because we are more localized. We are just pointing out few angstrom nows, but the but the sample is of few millimeter, and and the original sample is of tens of tens of millimeters. Uh, we need to know exactly what those TM, TM samples of few uh, micrometer at least uh, consist of or a few uh, mm is consist of. So we, we need to use this advancement of material machine learning in future to process all the data. We are not going to miss any atoms. We are not going to miss any single atoms. Uh, we are not just 
picky, like just choosing our own interest regions because sitting in microscopy for a few, few hours, like even for 10 hours, we can obtain 100 images, but even the processing of those 100 image, image scripting takes quite many our life uh, just for the simple single sample but in our in within our project we may need to get on with tens of tens of sample within few months so we cannot spend as much as time as a, like a human so uh, so thanks to this uh, advancement so we don't need to sit uh, in a computer uh, just feed the data feed tell the machine learning uh, processes or or set the algorithms and simply get the output so these are another example of uh, modern, of course, this is like uh, with different electron dosing, uh, I forgot to tell. Uh, even it, it shows like an, it, it, it makes its own error choices uh, with different electron doses if there is any uh, possibility for uh, atom to be lost or what, what are the different um, a, like alloy atoms can be removed or the edge atoms can be removed. So it, it makes its own choice of all the processing uh, and it shows uh, it, it shows everything uh, which is out of our boundary. It 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 defocus, it focus, uh, it it process all the variations and get all the atomic uh, columns uh, as an output. So that's a speciality here with the, this type of neural networks. So this so far I was talking about uh, material science, but of course, I just want to show this slide as a finally, uh, because even um, the biological people are started to use uh, Python uh, Python packages or uh, for uh, process their own data uh, with, our, uh, the, with the biological imaging, uh, what they need for uh, like medical applications or such things. So, uh, so this is a slide just want to show, uh, of course, it, it can be used in uh, different fields than the material science. Like uh, they, they are in here, for example, for the image mos mosaicing, they use uh, C++, then image, uh, JS, Java, then Foresight as a, um, Foresight is a models for image segmentation, feature extraction, tracking and machine learning are written in C++, uh, leveraging widely used libraries, including such uh, li libraries. So this can be, um, used together and get cell reconstruction and finally the image analysis and image visualization of course everything it uh, comes under python packaging um, feed into uh, get get from the data data and feed into the process and get final output as an image so this is uh, one example of a biological way of uh, imaging or learning uh, through uh, the advancement of python yeah, this is another uh, example, uh, again with biology, uh, these images get from fluorescence uh, spectroscopy and there are a possibility to classify all the nuclease and all the uh, all those structures uh, with, with different pipelines uh, and with final reconstruction, they can make an interactive uh, analytic tools of all these informations. Uh, I conclude my talk here. Uh, hope uh, you might have benefited uh, with what this advanced world is doing, uh, combining physics, mathematics, and computation. Uh, of course, uh, as it is an online, it's uh, difficult to ask questions and answer, but of course, I'm very happy to answer. Uh, this is my mail ID. It's my official mail uh, for all, all the technical queries. Uh, so you can mail me here. Uh, where, uh, of course, as I told you, there are possibility for uh, new collaborations. Uh, I'm I'm open to that. Uh, please approach me if the, if if you if you find interesting with my talk and if you find uh, your way of uh, possibility to collaborate with me, uh, I'm more welcome. Uh, thanks for listening and thanks for uh, thanks again to the PhD Arts and Science College and Mathematical Department and Dr. Bonapriya for inviting me to uh, for such a wonderful session today. Uh, thank you all.